One-to-one -one functions. First, we need to understand what to get to where we want to get to in this section, which is one-to-one -one functions and inverse functions. <clears throat> we need to understand, and, and really it's to get to inverse functions, which will get us to exponential functions and the inverse function of exponential functions, logarithmic functions. So how do we do all this stuff? Well, we got to understand what a one-to-one -one function is. So remember when um, we had just relations and then we had this subgroup called functions, right? And so for a relation to be a function, it doesn't turn into it, but for it to be a function um, for every, and this is layman's terms, not mathy terms, for every x, there could only be one y. And so when, and more mathy would be, for every value in our domain or every element in our domain, we could only have one element in our range or output or mapped or there's multiple different ways to talk about that. So that really meant, in, uh, in a visual sense, it meant that for every x, I could only have one y. So I should write that like this. For like for an x value of 5, I could only have this y value of 4, such that my point would be, or uh, coordinate would be, 5 comma 4. I could then not, all, not be allowed to, I, I can't, I'm allowed to. If I have this point as part of my graph as well, so let's say my function looked like this, this point was there as well, so the x value of 5 could also have an x value of 7, then this is not a function. It's a relation, it can exist, and we can graph it, and we have a good time with it, um, but uh, it's not a, not a function, all right? So I think you guys are okay with this after we reviewed it um, in the past, because you've had this concept and we've talked about this, or you've heard talk about it and you've discussed or thought about it for a number of years now. So I don't believe too many high school students are exposed to this idea of what a one-to-one -one function is, uh, or at least not to my recollection as uh, 12 years as a high school teacher, um, and also in my own education, but that's 100,000 years ago, so who knows what I would, for, would have forgotten at this point. So here's the deal with a one-to-one a -one function. For every, for any two inputs, for any two inputs, and, and this is just a different textbook using different language. So when they say inputs, they're talking about domain values or independent uh, variable or x values, okay? So if the x values are the inputs, for any two of them, choose any two, doesn't matter, uh, there, have, there must be two different output values, or I should say outputs, which are the range values Or the x or the y values. Okay, so visually that means uh, algebraically that means this kind of thing. If I had, uh, let's think about it this way. If I had some x value, let's call it x1, and I have another x value, x2. So graphically, you know, think about this as maybe the the number seven, and this says like negative two, whatever. It doesn't matter along the x-axis. Okay. So if that's the case, um, if I take, if I have a function and I want to determine if it's one to one, if I evaluate that function of, at x equals one, in other words, take x, x, x sub one, whatever that value is, in this case I said as a suggestion, it's negative two, put negative two into the function and out comes a value. That's this. And if I did the same thing, but then instead with seven or the x two value and put it in and out came a value, which would be this, those cannot be equal, okay? They cannot be equal. So for instance, f of two cannot equal f of seven. If that's the case, and when I'm saying it's not just two of them, and then it works, just pick two, and ah, oh, they don't equal, okay, the thing's one to one. For any pair, 
So if there are 70 elements or 70 numbers, 70 values, if I put any two, any pair of them, any two, this and that, and put them in there, and they come up with the same y value, burp, no longer, no, that function is not one to one. Okay, so visually, here is, here are a couple of uh, examples. All right, uh, let me let me do this a little differently. I'm going to erase that. All right, and we'll go to the middle. All right, so let's think about this function here. This should look like some odd function. Think of it as a cubic if you want. Um, so f of x equals x cubed, or 3x cubed plus 2x squared, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so it looks something like that. So I have, let's select some x value of 4 and another one at negative whatever that is, 2, 4, 7. So let's say negative 7 and 4. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It can be any 2. I could choose this one and this one next. I could choose the 4 again and then 2. It doesn't matter. If I put those into my function, out comes a value. That value is, if you go to calculus, most calculus folks talk about it as height. But um, it's the y value that goes with it. So let's travel up vertically to get to the graph and then over to get to the y value. And let's say this one is 1.9. Okay, it's 1.9, whatever. If, if you want to say 2, that's perfectly fine. 7 brings us down to here. And then we're talking about, I don't know, negative 2, 4, 6.5. 6.5. Do they have the same y value? Or meaning, is this true? More specifically, this one, right? F of negative 7. Is that true? No? Then it's 1 to 1. If, it's, if this statement is not true for any pair of x values, this particular function, the purple one, uh, the odd function, it is 1 to 1. And so are all of them. Uh, I guess it depends. Uh, not all of them, because uh, once I get to x to the fifth, we could do this kind of thing. Well, I guess x cubed stand too. So be careful. They're not all. Never mind. Disregard all that that I just said. Odd functions have a chance. That's a better way to say it. Odd functions have a chance. This one does not, because look, I have two y values. They're the same. You, uh, I didn't show you that yet. So we'll see. Here's the next example, the next visual. Okay, pow, pow. Should make you count how many say, times I say pow. So this hopefully is a quadratic for you. You recognize it as some quadratic. I made it kind of flat, doesn't matter. So, um, and I've drawn it so it crosses the, the x-axis so this is easier to see. Um, we'll do it uh, with a couple different values. So if I happen to choose uh, the value of one, uh, excuse me, negative 1, and the value of 1. Uh, I tried to make this symmetric about the y-axis, and so here's that height, and here's that height. The intention is that these are equal. So this is at y equals negative 2. I don't know. Okay? So for both f of negative 1 and f of 1, I get the value of negative 2. And so this is not 1 to 1. Okay, And so if I go back to that cubic thing that I was trying to draw, let's do another set of values here. Um, if I had chosen, what, 2, 4, 6, 6, it would be this guy. And if I go 2, 4, 6, if I've drawn it nicely, I'm trying to say that this is 6 and this is negative 6. Pow. These two y values, the, or the y values at 6, 6 and negative 6 are at the same height or the same y value, maybe some y value of 1.9 or something, okay? So <clears throat> this function is not one-to-one. -one. If I, And really, if I can pick only a single pair out and it doesn't work, pff, it's not one-to-one. -one. Let's go back to the cubic and take a look at that, the one that I drew secondarily. Um, I should just say second instead of being all doofy. Um, if I had a cubic that looked like this, okay, which it can, of course. This one is not one-to-one -one either, because if I chose the x value that belongs to this y value, whatever this x1 is, and whatever the x that went to this y value, 
x2, they have the same y value. Okay? So it is not not a one-to-one -one function. Okay? And so hopefully with the last couple of examples, you realize that to determine if a function, not to mention it's over here too, um, that a one-to-one -one function for a function to be one-to-one, -one, it must pass the something line test. Now we've already had the vertical line test, so hopefully from the pictures you know that I'm going to want you to say the horizontal line test. Okay? So a one to one function. And here's an example in, uh, in the form of a mapping. Okay? So a mapping is when we do this kind of thing. Um, here's a set of values, three, seven, two, and then here's a set of values. This is the domain, this is the range, and this maps to four, this maps to 17, and this also maps to 17. Remember, for any single, any pair of x values, I cannot, they cannot have the same y value. So this x has this y, this x has this y. They both have 17, so not one to one, okay? It may in fact still be a function. Um, this one is because uh, one to one is not the same as being a function. They're kind of the opposite, right? In To be a function, uh, a y value cannot, ha excuse me, a, an x value cannot have two y values, right? So if this happened, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, if this mapped to nine, but also seven, this would not be a function, not a function, okay? Whereas if, uh, again, um, let's say I had this kind of thing, it's not numerical, Helen, Bob, and Stan, and this is their birth month. This is uh, peoples, and no, I understand it's not really a plural. And let's say that's their birth month and uh, July and August. Stan was born in August, but Bob was born in July and so was Helen. Well, this is not one-to-one, -one. okay? Uh, and that's, that's kind of all I got for one-to-one. -one. <laughs>